1943, the English fog and the German Air Force virtually stop American deep penetrations. An American correspondent attached to the 8th Air Force writes, The fall fog is the first break the 8th Air Force has had in months. The men are about to crack. On the outside, the airmen still play at being rough and ready. When a flyer stops cursing or griping, he has something serious on his mind. For the first time, the idea that they might be going to die has come into the lives of these airmen. A waste gunner wrote, I remember Christmas Day, 1943. We gave a party for a bunch of English kids and showed them around the base. I said to one of them, how would you like to see the inside of a bomber? He said, Wizard Yank, and up he went. He poked around and said, It's truly a flying fortress. Well, what could you say to him? The B-17 was a good plane, but it wasn't a fortress. Without fighter escort, it wasn't good enough over Germany. But you don't tell that kind of thing to kids. We just gave them the best Christmas we could and acted like the heroes they wanted us to be. In the next months, the 8th Air Force is reinforced. A new long-range fighter, the P-51, appears. strategic bombardment will be successful only when every German industrial area can be reached. There is a line in Germany beyond which we cannot cross without losses too great to bear. We need strength at long range, or else we must abandon the idea of strategic bombardment. We need new defenses against the attacks of German fighters, and a machine gun turret is added under the chin of the B-17. New crews replace those lost over Germany. The depth of our heavy attacks is dependent upon the escorting fighter planes. The speed and performance of American fighter planes is excellent, but their range is too short. Fuel tanks are improvised to hang from the bellies of the fighters. The planes are readied in the first months of 1944. The issue is still to be decided. The air crews are to be relieved from combat after flying 25 missions. But the men know that in some missions of the previous autumn, up to 20% of the bombers and their crews did not return. If the statistics continue to hold, no man can count on living through his tour of duty. Nevertheless, the bombers take off. begins a new tactic in the battle for supremacy in German sky. We hope these fighters, equipped with extra fuel tanks, will make the difference. The fighters now have sufficient range to escort the bombers to and from the targets. They are our last best hope.
American bomber and fighter formations meet each other 20,000 feet above the French coast. Chaco leader to cowhide leader. Your fighter escort is joining up with you. Meanwhile, the German airfields from the Baltic to Bavaria are alert. At no time in the war has Germany had so many interceptors. At no time in the war have German fighter defenses been so strong. German pilots know every weakness of the American planes and tactics. The Luftwaffe still holds air superiority over Germany. The Germans mass their air power to turn back the American invaders. Americans fly deeper into France, almost to the German border. The German fighters, high over Karlsruhe, wait for the American bombers to come to them. Once the American fighters leave the bombers, the Germans will make their attack. Jaco leader to cowhide leader. Bogies one o'clock. Germans do not attack. They are bewildered. The escorting American fighters have not broken off. They are accompanying the bombers deeper into Germany than ever before. The bombers are approaching the target. The Germans are running out of fuel. If they are ever to make their attack, they must come in now. Five o'clock, strip tanks and break left. are engaged and defeated by long-range American fighters. The Allies pressed the attack from 20,000 feet to 20 feet. Once the skies have been cleared of German planes, the fighters strafe the anti-aircraft towers. Later, down on the deck, in advance of the bombers, the American fighters shoot up the Nazi planes on the airfields before... Later, down on the deck, in advance of the bombers, the American fighters shoot up the Nazi planes on the airfields before they can run.
The Americans have broken the strength of the German aerial defenses. Now the American bombers are free to strike any target in Germany, however deep. The whole industrial complex supporting the German war machine lies vulnerable and exposed. The German factories, the oil refineries, the hydroelectric stations, the German industrial centers, Berlin, Hamburg, Leipzig, Hanover, Brunswick, Stuttgart, every major city in Germany is bombed and bombed again. The American formations come back to England virtually intact. We lose less than 4% of the bombers we send out. Men of the 8th Air Force know they now have a good chance to live out the war. <laughs> 